Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert. Welcome back to The Ted Show. Excited to have my dear friend, my talented friend, my incredibly grateful friend, the one and only artist, Christy Lee is here. Welcome back, Christy. How are you today? I'm amazing. Amazing. I, you look amazing. Oh, you look beautiful. You. Thank We're going to talk about uh, her new podcast, which you can see scrolling across uh, the bottom there, shit I need to know. I said it for you. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're going to talk you. about her art. We're going to talk about Miami. For those of you who don't know what goes on in Miami, she has so much going on. Uh, we're going to talk all about it and get an update from her. So, Christy, let's take a deep dive. But before we do, yes. you love that voice. It's like the transition I do, I voice. Do. I like it. Uh, I like it. Before we get started with that, tell them a little bit about you. They love that origin story to kind of get to know who you are. Well, I'm an artist here in Orlando. Um, I've been painting for maybe 10, 12 years now, but really just started showing my art about four years ago. Yeah, almost five now. And I am so excited to say that things have been going really well. I do work very hard, um, not only in my own, uh, you know, doing my art, but also trying to help other artists in the community and um, giving back wherever I can too. You give back a lot. We'll get to that. But I have to ask you, I always love you. Obviously, obviously, five years ago is what you said that know, yeah. you started uh, putting your art out there. But I want to go back 10 years. And yeah. how did you stumble onto it? Did you always know you had a gift? Did you grow up drawing? Did you grow up painting? Uh, tell them a little bit about that, because a lot of people know earlier on in life. Right. And you started a little later. Well, I started drawing when I was very young, but I come from a very, very poor family. So I never had the opportunities to um, to buy like quality stuff, like paints and things like that. So um, I would doodle a little bit here and there. I knew that I had a little talent to draw a little bit, but it kind of had to go on the back burner because I needed to learn to do something to make a living. So I became a hairdresser, which is a form of art as well. Agreed. And I did that in New York and did pretty well with that for about 30, 35 years um, until my child went away to college, my last child, and then it was my time. <laughs> and so I took my first art class there, uh, but pretty much I'm a self-taught artist. Yeah. And how did you how did you stumble on what type of art? Because everybody, first of all, a high end art kit would not help me draw better stick figures. So <laughs> yeah. you have to have some sort of gift or talent. Yeah. Uh, but how do you decide what medium? Well, I think you have to play with different mediums to find that out. So, yes, I started sketching and then I took a paint class and I took a portrait class because I wanted to know really how to do it right. Um, and I found that that's really hard. <laughs> so then I took um, some classes in mixed media and a little bit of sculpture, which I absolutely love too. And so I think you find your way as you go along. But I decided at one point that I was going to do something artistic every single day. So every single day, that's what I do. I paint every single day. Um, I try to do things that will help the art community, not just that will help me. Um, I uh, came up with a few things where at Mills Gallery, I help artists learn how to approach a gallery. Um, started something called Jingle Mills, which we'll get to a little bit more later. Um, also to help artists that were having a little bit of difficulty in at the holiday season. And I think uh, helping artists out, Boris and I have talked about that several, many, many times over. Uh, how I feel like the artist community, community uh, could use any kind of help and mentorship it can get and support. Yeah. When you first did, and then I'll move on to everything, but I have to know when you first did your, decided you wanted to uh, sell a piece yeah. uh, that, that, that you actually wanted to have uh, some sort of show or at least some sort of showing, uh, was it hard to knock down those doors to get in? Well, actually a friend of mine, an, a mentor for me, um, when um, that first started happening, came to my house one day and he said, let me see some of your art. And he went around my house and he said, you have all this art and you're not showing any of it. So at the time he was putting together an event for the Manello Museum and he said, I'd really like to put one of your pieces there and see what happens. So I was a little nervous about that. Again, <laughs> I had no idea how to price it. He sort of helped me with that. And we did it and it sold the first night that it was there. So it was sort of like that affirmation that 
maybe you should keep going, you know? Yes. So, well, was, if you haven't yeah. seen Christy's art, Christy Lee, you can find her at christyleeart.com. That's scrolling across the bottom there. I really encourage you to check that out. Let's talk about the title of the show. Oh, uh, shit. Okay. I need to know. And then we'll continue to progress because I have lots of questions for you. Okay. First of all, a podcast. Okay. Why? And then why this name? So let's talk okay. about because I, I love the name, yeah. Uh, but I would love to know the direction and what what your what your purpose is and what you're intentionally trying to put out there in the world with your mini cast. My mini cast. Well, here's the thing. Um, as an artist evolves onto different levels, there are things that you need to learn. And I was trying to find some answers to some questions that. Um, I would like to know and I would like to share with other artists at the same time. And so I went to a few of the different art schools, venues, whatever, and was asking some questions. And it seems like it's like a little dark secret. So I said, somebody needs to pull back the curtain here and and let's get those answers. And if I can find those answers and other artists can listen at the same time, then it could help them as well, not just for me, but for um, others who uh, or at that same level. So it'll be a resource for artists to yeah. learn more about how they can get their art out, what what somebody who is successful does. Uh, I love that you're pulling the curtain out, kind of like the grand wizard or the wizard, yeah. finding him behind the curtain. Yeah. Uh, because I think a lot of people uh, struggle. A lot of artists struggle. Boris and I have talked about this before. He's here, by the way, so I have to like wave it. <laughs> give him kudos. Uh, because we know that we have a thriving, amazing, creative group of artists here in Central Florida. And it's been sure. a challenge for them. So yes. any any resource like your pod mini cast, yeah. uh, tell us why it's a mini cast. Because it's only 15 minutes. We don't want people to get bored and leave. We want to give them the information right up front and move on. I love it. Yeah. Has it debuted? Is it debuting? Tell no. us where they can find it. When, when does it launch? It launches in January. Woo. So it's to be seen. I'm excited. I'm excited. And I know that you have Jingle Mills coming up. Yes. Can we talk about that? That's in December, yeah. but give us the 411 because I can think of a lot of artists who I've had on the show that I think would be very interested. Well, Jingle Mills um, came about one day when we were at the gallery and I was saying, we have this beautiful space. And I know that there are so many artists who are in a bad way right now. This time the holidays were coming up. I said, why don't we open the gallery and let artists come in and sell their, um, you know, their art. We keep it under two hundred dollars so that the public can come in and feel comfortable about, you know, um, spending some money before the holidays without getting, you know, um, too deep into it. So uh, we set up tables. Each artist sets up their own table. They sell whatever they want. That's handmade. It has to be made by them, and uh, keep it at two hundred. And then we open it to the public and. It's been pretty successful. So this year we're doing it again on December 18th at Mills Gallery. So any artist that would like to participate can contact the gallery and do so. And the public can come out and you want them to. You want them to look at the art, learn about the artist yes. and buy yes. pieces, buy, buy something. Buy pieces, help local artists this time of year. Yeah. There's a lot of what you do. Uh, and then obviously I want to talk about Miami, but you do so much in the community. I know this for a fact because I know you and I've seen your work and I follow what you do. Uh, let's talk a little bit about why. There's always got to be a why. There's uh, there's some intention there. Uh, you definitely kind of joked that you're uh, earlier before we went live, that you're ungrateful, but actually the, the honest to God truth is that you're one of the most grateful people oh, I know. Uh, but that's that's purposeful. That's intentional behind that's what right. you're doing. So can, can you that's share right. with the audience? Well, as I said earlier, I come from a very poor situation, one of five children, alcoholic father. My mother did everything she can to keep us fed, whether it was going to the churches and collecting clothing and getting food or whatever she can do. And so it was a hard life growing up as a child. It was wonderful having five siblings to hang out with, but it was also hard because we had to share what little bit that we did have. So I always said that when things got better for me, um, that I would always remember where I came from. And so it's important to me um, that I do, um, I get so many good things come to myself. So how can I not sh share with others, Agreed. you know? Agreed. And I think that's that's such an 
intentional thing I wish more people would do because mm -hmm. I can promise you, having done it my whole life, uh, you plant those seeds and they come back a hundred, a thousand so fold. True. That's true. And you just yeah. continue to give other people opportunities, whether you uh, get that seed planted and get that reward back immediately isn't the point. The point That's is right. that you do it and I promise you, you will get a ton back, which you obviously have because you're very successful. And one of those Thank successful you. pieces is Miami. So tell us oh. about Miami. Miami. So I am so excited that I will be down in Miami during Art Basel week. And I will be showing my art at Spectre mm -hmm. Miami, which is wonderful. It's in the MANA Convention Center. It's the first week of December, and I am so honored to have been um, accepted to be in the show. So Art Basel is not in person. No. Um, so no. No. I like to share that because okay, yeah. a lot of people have asked me, and honestly, the first time I heard about it, I thought, who's this art guy? I, I'm just going to be honest and throw it all out no, there. I wish so tell would. us about yeah. the, the, it's a big deal in the art world it is to be part deal. of it. That's right. It's probably one of the biggest in the country and in the world because international artists have come as well. And so what the main um, art basil in the convention center is, is typically blue chip galleries showing blue chip artists, okay? But now over the years, it's grown so much that all of Orlando uses different spaces um, for different artists, whether they're blue chip artists or um, not necessarily emerging artists, but artists who are at a certain level um, show their art and everybody around the world seems to wanna come. So there's Art Miami, there's Spectrum, there's Red Dot, there's um, On the Beach, they have Scope and there, you know, there are a lot of opportunities to see some of the best art in the world right here in Miami. Is it difficult to choose which one of your babies, which is what um, I refer to as your art, uh, to be in the show? Um, it, it all depends on your space. If you have a larger space, then you can share it with a lot more of your babies. But if you have a small space, then, of course, you have to pick um, what you feel is the strongest piece because you want to show yourself in the best light. You know, other galleries are looking, other marketing people are there, you know, um, maybe museums are there. You know, there are a lot of um, different people that have eyes on it. So, yeah, you want to show your, yourself in the best light possible. And when is that again? That is the first weekend in December. It's it's a Miami is and it's on hopping. fire on during fire. Art Basel. It on is fire. just yeah. it's insane. And so if you are in a good way, I mean, or yes. a bad way, depending on if you're an, an artist, maybe you like it if it's in a crazy way. I love it. But it's a, way. it's such a good, the, the vibe there is so creative. Like it you can is. feel it and you don't have to be a, you could be a novice at collecting art and understanding art. Uh, you still want to attend. And so that's the yes, first week great. in December. We'll also uh, post a link in the comments. Can I tell you a little well. bit about how my, my first thought about going there was yes, came about? Me. So um, we are um, very close. We have been very close to an artist here who unfortunately just passed, Harold Gard, 99-year-old artist, a spectacular person, a spectacular artist. And him and I had gotten very close. And we talked about what was something that he didn't yet achieve in his career. And not necessarily achieve, but didn't participate in, in his career when he had so many you know, he was all over the world. His stuff is famous all over the world. And we talked about it one time and he said, oh, I'd like to go. I said, I'd like to go to our Miami. And he said, I'd like to go too. I said, let's go together. And so that was the first opening of the thought of how we were going to do that. And yeah, as you know, right now, um, he had passed away just recently. So, um, but to honor him, I would like to take a piece of his art with me down to Art Miami and maybe some of his material, his art, his books, and have like a little space there so that I feel like from up above, he can feel like he was he was there. He was there. He I will be that. there. He will be there. Yeah. Amazing human being, such a blessing to yeah. have met him and had, had him on the show. He was a firecracker he and was. I loved every second. Right up it. until the end. I have too. no doubt. I yeah. would not expect anything less. From Harold, and you can check Harold Guard out. I'll post uh, about him in the oh, comments as well. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about what's going on in the art world here locally. I think it's important oh, for yeah. people to kind of know. We had an artist here that at the club that l finally left because she is 
uh, finally doing well enough to have left her job here to focus 100% oh, on art. But I feel like there's a lot of part-time uh, employees yeah. that are full-time artists in their brain. Yeah, it's unfortunate because art um, typically takes quite a while, you know, because it's not just painting a pretty picture. There's marketing, you know, there's getting on your, you know, getting out your door and showing your art to other people, whether it's art festivals or art galleries or museums, if, if that were your, you know, your um, opportunity. But in Orlando itself, we have so many talented artists. Yeah. I mean, the list just goes on and on. But a lot of them have to work. Again, we're in that time when, um, you know, we have to feed ourselves. And a lot of people are struggling with the fact that they have to go out during the day or however they work their, their hours. But they have to do so much for that that they don't get to do all the things that they love. Like you were talking about that artist who now can go out. But there aren't a lot of artists that can do that. And it was the same way for me that I had to have a career my whole life, to raise my children, and now... That I'm retired, I have that opportunity to do that. But it's sad that we have to wait till we retire. <laughs> Agreed. Well, <laughs> to get those opportunities, but um, yeah, but it's hard. It's uh, it's a lot of work. I feel like the community, people like Boris and you, um, really do an amazing job at trying to collaborate and bring the artists in and give them a venue, a platform, uh, a way to be able to. Uh, get a little further than they would if they just were on their own, which is right. part of what your podcast is going to be amazing. Yeah. Shit, I need to know. I had to say it twice. Sorry. Uh, I love it. Uh, but I feel like that is what we need here locally. We need to continue to mentor right. and help exactly. provide opportunities for the artists who are not, don't really know how to maneuver through it because yeah. it is at the end of the day, you have a creative side, but you also have to have a business side it's true. and you have to figure that out. And that can be very yeah. daunting for an artist who thinks solely with the creative brain to really embrace and figure out how to um, make it their livelihood that actually supports right. them. Which is why when we do show artists at Mills, we've in the past, we've um, we've met with them before they had their show or their exhibition and we teach them how to speak to the audience, you know, so that they can sell their children. Cause a lot of artists have a hard time selling their own art, but it's important that if you can't tell your story, you know, how can somebody else appreciate it or love that piece, you know? So there's that. We um, talk again about how to approach the gallery, how to move your art into the next level. So we are trying the best, that we can. And I love the fact that Boris gives me that opportunity to do that. Um, and uh, the space is great that we that we have there so that um, we can show the best artists that we have in Orlando. It's a beautiful space. Yeah. Mills Gallery. If you haven't seen it, it's in the Mills 50 district or area. And it's absolutely beautiful. And, you know, the gallerist isn't so bad either. <laughs> We love Boris. Yeah. Um, before yeah. we head out, Boris yes. will think or wave at me if I've forgotten anything. But I always like to ask a personal question. Um, I won't put you too on the spot. But okay. uh, thinking about the art world and the things that you've been through and because you're a, a grateful person, um, when I say the word hero to you, who's the first person that comes to mind? Well, right now, that would be Harold Gard Tell for me, me. And that's because, you know, even up until the end of his life, Art was so important to him and the artist, not just the art. We Many times we went to his home and he shared so much information and so much of his talent um, with myself and many other artists who got that opportunity to do that. But up until the end, I mean, this guy was doing his own podcast. You know, Amazing. he would talk to young artists. He'd ask them questions. He'd offer himself up for, in so many situations. And I just thought, wow. I want to be just like him. Exactly. Yeah. Lovely spirit, funny yeah. AF, yeah. and yet so talented and giving of his time Sharp. and his talent. Sharp, Sharp as a tack, Sharp. much sharper than me. Yeah, me too. Uh, he yeah. just was um, a big soul and he shared. And I, I, that's one of the reasons, one of the many reasons. That's what we him. loved about him I too. I love, yeah. love that. All right. So Christy, wow. tell them the best way they can find out more about you, okay. how they can reach you, how they can learn all about these amazing things that you've got okay. going on. Okay, well, obviously it would be my website with www.christyleeart.com. 
um, visit my Instagram at Christy Lee Art. Um, stop into the gallery. If you have any other questions, feel free to call us there. And um, look for us for Should I Need to Know in January. Yeah. I just want to say it over and over again. Must be my mood. Should I Need to Know? You're Should amazing. I need to know? Thank you so much. Oh, thanks for the Love opportunity. Love having Christy Ted. Lee Thank you. on the show. Thank you. you guys, give back to our artists. Get yes. involved. Go to Jingle Mills. We'll put that link there too. Please get involved. Support our local art community. Believe me, after COVID, before COVID, it was crazy. After COVID, yeah. it's just been such a challenge to get back on track. And so, uh, people like Boris and Christy and Harold and everyone in that circle are doing so much to get back and try to get you guys uh, the the, the business and gets you out of your part-time thinking at your job and do what you fully love, which is the arts. All right. We'll see you guys soon.